Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the MMA card for um, Saturday, September 11th, I believe. Um, this is an absolutely amazing card from a uh, DraftKings DFS perspective. Um, when I say amazing, I don't mean that it's easy. I mean it's extremely difficult. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of, of roster construction uh, considerations. There's a lot of style considerations. And this is the type of card that I really want to spend some time on because, look, even if you don't, you know, win it all this week, I think you'll learn something that will help you maybe in future weeks. And maybe do. Maybe we will win something. Who knows? This past week was found incredibly interesting that on a 12-fight slate, nobody hit the optimal. Amazing, right? Yeah, like 15 people chopped, or more than that, maybe chopped first. And on a 12-fight slate, nobody hit the optimal. All you had to do was hit the optimal, which was um, was one swap, uh, uh, go me for uh, 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 Kopulov, and you leave like five, 600 on the table, which is ter certainly not re unreasonable. And you would have had it all by yourself. Um, not to say it's easy, but... People say that on a 12 fight slate, it's impossible to do. It really isn't. Um, so in any case, I think that this card is is really, really difficult. And I think that there will be a unique winner of this of this slate. Extremely, extremely tough. Um, because, <laughs> for, for lack of a better description, there are three, at least, uh, fighters above 9K who I probably believe will finish their fights in the first round. And yet it's possible that you might not want to play any, of them. Um, or maybe at the most just one, because if you play them, it, it creates incredible imbalances in the rest of your lineup. And, and there are mid range plays that, that exist that you combine two of those, you might end up better than, than even ceiling performances out of the top guy with, with, with a, with a smaller, uh, with like a 7,200 that might, might get there. So really, really difficult card. Let's kind of take a look at it. Uh, we will go just, I guess, fight by fight. And, and the first one here on the, the card, um, we got to remember to get to the Almeida one, is that's going to be a Leonez against Weeks. And, and I will say that on a card like this, you can afford to be very stingy with your um, – stingy? I would say greedy with what you need from your, from your fighters. I do think it's going to be a very high scoring slate. So with that said, if you're playing a guy that does not have a lot of finishing upside or grappling upside, and you're just trying to squeak out a decision, I think you're, I think you're on the wrong, you know, you're on the wrong end on a slate like this. You, you really need to have something. You need to have at least some high grappling upside or preferably you know, some finishing upside or even preferably more preferably than that finishing upside with, you know, with grappling upside and look, look, if you can get all that at low ownership, even better, but we'll, we'll get to that maybe later in the week. So Leonez against weeks, you know, the, the, the pricing is decent, right? Let's take a look. This is, we don't want to look at my, my MLB slate for this week for this uh, card. Let's pull up the MMA. So we could see at least what the salaries are. And this is not what we're going to play, but just as a as an example. All right. So you have weeks versus uh Linez and, and the, the pricing is good. You know, it's it's 8200 versus 8K. So if this fight gets there, it is always a very important fight to be looking at. But let's take a look and see if the the inside the distance props uh, is inside the distance props support this. You do have a fight doesn't go to decision line of minus one eighty nine, which is, which is, which is really, really not bad. Um, and when you have a um, uh, pricing like this, eighty two hundred eight k, I think that really puts this fight in play. Um, when, when when it comes to how the the uh, props break down, you have Leonez is a little bit more of a favorite to get the KO plus 235 as opposed to Weeks, a plus 265. 
because Lean is you know, more of a first round guy. And if he gasses out, it's a little, you know, then it, then it becomes weeks of show. So I feel as though that the better side on this, in this fight is going to be uh, Leoness, right? It's just because their, their win odds are pretty much identical. Um, but, uh, but, but nonetheless, Leonez has a better win, uh, you know, better KO prop. As a matter of fact, um, it looks as though Weeks is actually a small favorite, like a minus 130. Um, and I guess that's sort of factored into the price from a win, win odds perspective. But when you think about it again, you have the, the, the guy who's the underdog here by 120 with the better inside the distance prop. He's more likely to get the finish than weeks um and in the absence of a significant amount of of uh wrestling upside from weeks it makes leonez the stronger play even though he's less likely to win um the fact that his inside the distance prop is stronger than weeks despite him being an underdog is is very very telling here. um so i in the first five would certainly prefer leonez uh, um as a uh, a dfs one uh, okay, Martinez against Reed. Uh, this fight, to me, uh, is is a pass. And you look at it. Yeah, Martinez is a minus 160 favorite. The first thing I like to look at is make sure there's no inherent line value. And no, that's it's about what it's supposed to be. And then you look for it inside the distance prop, which is reasonable, and it just isn't. I mean, it's plus 175 to go, you know, to go to decision. That's extremely poor. And in the absence of Martinez having some extremely good wrestling upside, um, it seems like a poor play. Um, Elise Reed has already thwarted uh, another fighter a couple of fights ago that had all this incredible takedown upside, that being Corey McKenna. And, and so I think Elise Reed's style is just going to be one that makes this fight a striking only affair that, you know, has very limited KO potential. And as a result, is a fight that you're probably going to want to pass. Haile Alatang versus Chad N. Helliger. So this is a this is a somewhat interesting fight. Uh, interesting from a, uh, from a gambling perspective because if you look at the if you look at the uh, the fight history of Chad Enlinger, if you do a little research, he had a fight with 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 well known poker pro Terence Chan. Uh, Terence Chan, for those of you who don't know who he is, I mean he just you know, superstar poker player who later in life decided to take up MMA. He was fighting, you know, in his thirties and one of the, and it still is, I think. And I think when he was, is he 35 now, 37 now, whatever it is, he fought Chad Enlinger uh, a few fights ago in Chad's uh, timeline. And he put up a pretty good fight and, and, and Terrence got submitted. Um, uh, well, he got, uh, got stopped. Um, and to this day, I, I tweeted at him the other day and he said, he's very disappointed with the stoppage. He, uh, so, I mean, this is a uh, pretty interesting fight, actually, to have someone actually know um, with, uh, with with tape against this guy. In any case, uh, we'll take a look at the at the first at the price and and the inside the distance prop. I guess we'll look at the price first because what stands out to me right off the bat is you have Alatang, who's only eighty four hundred. Yet his price is a minus one eighty, and a one eighty price tag is more in line with a, with an eighty six hundred price tag as opposed to eighty four. So you're getting a decent amount of 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 inherent line value on Alatang in the first place. Um, we go to the fight doesn't go to decision. Unfortunately, this is kind of poor. You know, you have um, it's plus one twenty to go to decision. And even Alatang's side is plus 375. So while you're getting a decent amount of, of, of line value from, from him, I don't think that that is what you're looking to do on a card like this. I really think you're looking for a pure upside and looking for finishing. And instinctively, it feels as though this should have a better inside the distance prop. I mean, both these guys are pretty active. I, Alatang just got, I think got a first round KO in his last fight or whatever. And, Al, and, and, and Chad, he's used to kind of like defend the takedowns and, 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 and come back. I guess the, what it is, is that Alatang does have that takedown upside. And that's, that's the thing. 
And that's what makes this kind of an interesting play because the inside the distance prop isn't there, but Alatang's path to victory is probably going to be on the wrestling end. And I, unfortunately, I spoke about this in our last uh, review that the grappler versus striker battles have not gone very well towards the grapplers recently. The, the, re the, the referees have not been too kind to the wrestlers in the striker grappler matchups. And this past week, it worked out very well for Nathaniel Wood, but it's only because Nathaniel Wood also, in addition to getting five takedowns, also dominated on the feet. Um, but if 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 you get a, a, a match, a matchup where out where or Ale, uh, where where Chad is a better striker and Alatang gets takedowns, you might run the risk of getting a poor decision uh, against you. Um, and it kind of filters down too, because if, if if the fighters know that the referees are not particularly, or the judges are not particularly favoring the the the, the smothering grapplers, they might not go for as many takedowns as you might imagine. So um, it still is kind of a strong play with that takedown upside, with the win equity as well. Um, so I will consider Alatang the side in this fight. Um, probably not going to play any of of, of Chad. Norma Dumont against Danielle Wolf. So we have a minus 400 favorite. However, you have a fight doesn't go to a decision line of a plus 137. So that is, uh, you know, for a 9,100 fighter, that is extremely poor. Um, now I've heard, I've heard uh, narratives about how Dumont, how Dumont can overcome that. Um, from what I hear, Wolf has had, very little, if any, training with grappling, and Dumont has kind of made significant improvements in that in that field. So, if, if Dumont decides to test her and take her to the ground and submit her, that is a way that Dumont can pay this off. I think if I think though that there are just a lot of nine K fighters that have just a much you know clearer path to that hundred points than than Dumont. Um, you're really speculating that Dumont's going to be able to is going to decide to do this because um, you I, I believe that Dumont can win whichever way she wants. You know, she can win on the feet, and so if she doesn't go for those takedowns, it doesn't go for the grappling. Just don't be surprised, right? And if once she initiates kind of a a, a striking only game plan, uh, she doesn't have a lot of finishing upside. So you're you're basically bust. You know, um, so it is. Listen, I, I will say that it probably does rate to be the lowest owned of the 9K fighters. So there's that going for it. But you're really asking a lot to, to, to play Dumont in this spot. Uh, Wolf, no interest. So you have Collier versus Barnett. And this is, uh, you know, another pretty big favorite, uh, just as big as Dumont, uh, minus 400. And you look at the inside the distance prop, it's kind of, it's kind of pedestrian for a 9,100 fighter, I suppose. I mean, we'll look at it. It says Collier winning by TKO is plus 160. Um, I guess it's okay. I mean, I prefer it to be minus something if you're playing a, a 9K and up fighter. So um, while he, I think on other cards he could be okay, I just feel as though these other 9K fighters just have just, just much better upside and a much more likely opportunity to get there. Um one thing I will say about this spot is that um, I don't believe um, Barnett has ever even been out of the first round. So with that said, I mean, maybe Collier does get him out of there really quickly. So um, I just feel as though Vegas should be respected in some, some degree here, but I will say this. I mean, like, how does this not get finished? I mean, what I just said, you know, Barnett, is he ever – actually, he has been out of the first round. I don't think he's won a first round. I think that's the thing. But let's take a look at what his record is. I mean, yeah, I guess so. I mean, he he did lose a three-round decision to Boudet. It's actually not that bad. I mean, Boudet, you know, basically robbed – what's his name uh, – in his last fight. But Boudet definitely had power. So maybe – I don't know. Maybe, maybe Barnett can uh, hang in there a little bit. Uh, for for whatever reason, I mean, I, I I do think that the 
that this is one of the weaker of the 9K fights, um, 9K uh, options. And I just don't think that Barnett is a plus three to one favorite. It's, underdog is something we'll, we really need to do. Uh, Pickett versus Tuhulian. Um Just everything you just kind of don't want. Well, I shouldn't say everything. I mean, it is a good pricing fight, right? You have 8,300 versus 7,900. See if there's any line value here. Well, no, not really. These, this line is priced correctly. And the fight doesn't go to decision is like, is like a pick em. I mean, not great, you know? So I'm probably going to end up passing on this one as well. Uh, if anything, I would probably take the Tahui inside. It's based on what I've heard, but I'm going to presume that the odds are correct for this one. I think this is going to be a pretty non-scoring, non-scoring type of fight. All right, uh, Almeida versus uh, Turkaj, and this is you know one of those fights. He's a minus eight to one favorite, and it's a minus four fifty to finish. Uh, more to more to the point, you have Almeida to win inside the distance is minus 315. I mean, it's minus 180 to go under one and a half rounds. This is like 100 points, right? This is just what's going to happen. So um, the only question is, is can you get this into your lineup? You know, he's, Almeida is 9,500, right? Is that, is that 9,600? Let's see. Yeah, sure, price. Right. He's 9,500. If you do that, it puts a lot of pressure on the rest of your build. Um, so again, as I mentioned, is the lead into this, to this, you know, to the show, I guess, is you're going to have like really great plays that you might not be able to play. And Almeida is one of them. He's 9,500. Who, who's going to, he's going to win in the first round. He just is. He's going to score a hundred at least maybe 110, 115, whatever, maybe finishes in a minute, but at 9,500, you're going to have to get to some 7,400 guys that maybe you don't want to play. So, um, uh, so I mean, it's a good play, but as we build lineups, you'll might find that you might not be able to play. Okay. Um, and obviously I have no interest in a seven to one underdog. He's probably should be priced at three K. All right. Arosa versus Dewadu. Um, let's take a look. Uh, first at the pricing here. So it's price should, it should be maybe 8,900 versus 7,300 based on the win odds. Let's see what it actually is. Uh, um, yep. 8,900, 7,300. So it's fair. Let's look at the inside the distance prop. Again, what I'm looking for is at least, you know, minus 180 or 160 to finish. But here it's like barely a pick em. You know, I mean, no thanks. And, and we look through Dewado plus 250, you know. The one thing I will say about this fight is if you look at Arosa's uh, game log, for lack of a better term, you'll see that in his last two, two fights, he's had three takedowns and then two takedowns. And then a few fights before that, he had three takedowns. He had a knockout win over Nate Landry or whatever. So you could argue that that Arosa does have grappling in his win condition, you know. And more to the point, I mean, you look at his 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 results in his four wins here. Every one of them is 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 a is a ceiling performance, you know, at seventy three hundred. So, and even a, even this decision win, he had two takes and he ended up with eighty. I mean, that's not that bad. So I think that Arosa is actually a pretty, pretty okay underdog. I, I prefer the Arosa side to the um, to the Dawadu side. Dawadu has, has like no takedown upside. He has no finishing upside. I shouldn't say no finishing upside. He's just not priced that way. Uh, but in Vegas, in the prop market. So for me, if anything, in this fight, I'd probably go with Arosa. All right, so here, to me, it looks like the best play on the slate. It, it's going to be, you know, I would imagine the most popular, but let's take a look. So Ian Kudalaba, who is priced at minus 200, but a lot of this steam kind of came in late after the pricing was released. And, and you'll see this, that you'll have um, uh, Kudalaba is at 8,600. So he's kind of underpriced by 
by a couple of hundred bucks, you know, um, like most of the two to ones are like 8,900 and he's priced at 8,600. So you're getting, you know, some, some line value, um, uh, some line value on here. Yeah. You, you, now you, you also lay on top of that, this, this inside the distance prop, which is ridiculous. I mean, it's minus 400, you know, you have Kudalaba is a pick em to win by TKO, you know, um, he's minus 125 to win inside the distance at only 8,600. This is this is just a smash play. Not to mention he's got takedown ups up. I mean, let's take a look at his at his profile here. His game law. I mean, takedowns. He had three, eight, nine. I mean, for real, he had three takedowns and, and lost in a minute. You know. I mean, this is everything you want in a play, and this is clearly the best play on the slate. Um, I can only imagine that ownership is going to follow it, um, but God forbid they don't make him fifty, you know, forty percent owned. This is you just have to start your lineups with it. This is where all the math is kind of taking you. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, what about Johnny Walker? All right, well, you know what. If in fact Kudalab is going to be 50% owned, you look at Johnny Walker's KO prop and he is plus 325 to win by KO, plus 225 to win inside the distance, which is actually pretty good, right? So if you're saying that 33% of the time he is going to win inside the distance and, and you're also attacking and fading a 50% owned fighter, then you're going to want that. So I think that right off the bat, if you want to start lineups, I think that you just literally must play one of these two guys. And I, I think that if I'm playing two lineups, I'd probably play either two Kudalatabas or one of each. Um, and I think that these are this is the first fight you really need to make sure that you play. Okay, uh, Aldana versus Meishi Chason. You have and here you have Ildana, who's a minus one eighty. Like let's compare this. So Aldana's a minus 180 compared to Kudalaba's minus 220. And yet Aldana is more expensive. Aldana's 8,800. I mean, further supporting the play of Kudalaba here. And unless she has an incredible inside the distance prop, there's just no mathematical you know, justification for playing her. You have, well, except for ownership, which we'll get there in a minute. It's not even favored to finish at all. So, um, Aldana by TKO plus 300. Uh, that's going to be a big no thanks for me. Um, maybe if she's, she, it, the, the thing that's good about it, she's probably going to be extremely low owned as a result. So of the plus 300 times, in other words, of the 25% of the time that she does get the finish. I mean, is that even enough? You know, what if she finishes in the third round or something like that? So it's going to be a tough one for me. It's going to be a tough one for me to get to. Um, Macy Chason is interesting because if you look at her profile here, she is only a two to like plus 160 favor, uh, underdog or whatever. And let's pull this up. Where is Chase? You look at her profile and she has six takedowns in her last fight against the aforementioned Norma Dumont, right? Um, and she had three takedowns in, in a win a couple of fights before that. And when one takedown and reversal in her other win. So her path to victory is very DraftKings friendly, you know? So, and it's not like she's a huge underdog. She's only a plus two, whatever, 160. Is that what we said? Um, or 150 or whatever it is. So I think she's very, very live here. And she's a very good DFS player. I don't think Aldana is a particularly good DFS player at all. So now here's another really just super strong 9K fighter. That would be uh, Li Jingling, otherwise known as the Leech. He's a minus 300. Not to mention, he's a pick em to win by TKO. Um, he's like plus 100, about a, you know, minus 130 inside the distance. I think that's pretty strong. Um, and while he doesn't really have a lot of, well, I guess he could have some takedown upside. Um, let's take a look at his profile here. Uh, yeah, he's got three takedowns some at some point. He's got another one here over here. So I think he's in a very, very strong play. 
Um, unfortunately for Tony Ferguson, I don't think I can play him on this card. His odds are just too weak. You know, um, I don't button plus 300 guys. You know, he, these guys should be closer to, you know, 6,000 than the 7,100 they're being priced. Okay, so you have Kevin Holland. Another, he's another minus two hundred versus Rodriguez. This should be another eighty nine hundred or eighty eight hundred type fight, and it is being priced that way. You have exactly that. Eight, well, it's eighty seven hundred, so maybe a tiny little bit of line value in him. Um, let's take a look at the inside the distance props here. I don't expect it to be that great. Um, let's just see. Yeah, so Kevin Holland is, uh, well, not that bad. Minus 150 to finish. And then you have Holland himself, plus 200 TKO. More to the point, Holland inside the distance, plus 150. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and play Kutalaba. But then again, I mean, you could play them both. But I mean, don't use this is like indicating what a tremendous play this. Kudala is a bigger favorite than all these people we just mentioned. I mean, except not actually not, you know, not jingling or whatever. And he's got all that finishing upside. I mean, he's let's just go back to this play. I mean, he's got Kudala inside the distance. He's a minus 105 and with the takedown upside. So um, he's just much better than the Holland play for sure. Um, and then I guess finishing off the card, right? Is that it? Um, yeah, and then finishing off the card, you have um, Shamaya versus Diaz, and he's like 100, you know, a 20, 10 to 1 favorite. Let's see exactly what he is. I mean, he's, I'm even, he's not even listed on here. That's how big of a favorite. That's not true. Shamayev, uh, where, they were already planning his next fight. They, they, they took his oh, here it is because uh they, they don't even have they, they haven't nick diaz not nate diaz no respect right in any case he's gonna finish him in the first round i mean he's he's let's see shemaev inside the distance is what first of all he's plus 160 to finish him in the first round that's for openers so i mean he's just gonna score 100 if he doesn't finish him in the first round it's gonna be because he was able to is because Diaz has a lot of heart and took a lot of punishment, which means more significant strikes and more takedowns and more points. He's just going to get 100. But, again, can you play him? He's 9,600. You know, if you play him, for example, let's say you play him, and then let's say that you want to play um, – uh, what's his name? Uh, Almeida. Whoa. Now, now you're at 7,700. Now what you have to now you're forced to play Arosa. Now you're forced to play Chiesan pretty much. And then you could maybe get to, you know, some of these mid-range plays. But here, I mean, you want you, you want to play Kudalaba. Now you have to play another underdog. And we've already, you know, you want to play Rodriguez? Maybe. I don't know. You, that's the pressure you put on yourself by playing these 9,500 fighters. Um so in any case, I encourage you to run some lineups and see where you can get. Um, maybe that's the idea is if you could play uh, jingling instead. You know, instead of paying for the ninety five hundred for those guys, those top guys, maybe you play jingling and then you can then get to some more of this other stuff. Then you could play the Alatang with the wrestling upside. You know, without having to dip down too much. You're probably still going to have to play at least one underdog that we talked about, like maybe the, you know, maybe the Arosa play or something like that, or maybe the um, what's her name, uh, Chiesa. I mean, if you get both of those guys in, then then you then you could pay up for another nine. K. So these are the kind of like the cool little, you know, wrestling upside punt plays that hey, if you get away with them, then you're in business. Um, okay, that will do it for this card breakdown. If I have any other uh, things uh, that come up with the next couple of days after absorbing more more content, I will come through. But I think that's it. I think this is a, a really good card. I think that Kudalaba is clearly the strongest play. Um, 
And I think as much as you'd like to get to those 9,500s, I think it's going to be very difficult. Um, but we will see. Good luck, everybody. And um, as Mr. Rohde would say, let's get it.